We're going to start this out here. Hey, man, let me tell you something here. Now, this has been the longest process you could ever imagine. I'm here with my friend Tommy Thompson Jr. Tommy has been on our podcast, Outside of the Grid, uh, several times back in the past. And Tommy is... Uh, Tommy has always come on our show representing space in some way or the other. Particularly over the last several years, we've talked about this uh, this spaceship that Elon Musk and SpaceX has been creating down in uh, southern Texas. Oh, Lord, I heard a bottle. Cork. Cork. And uh, anyway, so uh, I have him here. He has some... Uh, Salty caramel, oh smoky, oh my goodness, that there's some flavored moonshine. And we're going to talk about his his recent adventure. Uh, he he loaded up uh, three or four weeks ago. He, he planned out a trip. He's got some mementos here for us to talk about. We got some pictures that will be going across your screen. But but Tommy loaded up. He went down and he he saw the test, which was on Monday. I think he got there Sunday. He can tell us all about this. But you know. Adults learn by hearing over and over and over again. That's what you're going to hear tonight because we're going to hear some, we're going to repeat some things, but some things are just beautiful about this. You imagine taking time out of your life to go down and watch the Starship, you know, the, 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 the test launch. That's what it was. You know, people try to put too much into it, but it was, it was a launch test. They found out a lot of things they need to find out. And we're going to find out a lot about Tommy's perspective of, uh, you know, being a, you know, a, a, a 49, 50 year old man. He went down there. He he, he 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 took time out, went down and spent time, took a lot of pictures for us, for himself, but we're going to share it with us. And uh, Tommy, what would make a man go down there? I mean, you know, and welcome to the show, by the way. Welcome to Outside of the Grid. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, um, this all started for me about 2013 or, or or so, or maybe before that, really. But um, about 20 years ago, it occurred to me while I was living in Little Rock that humanity could be wiped out tomorrow, just flashed out by either nuclear, stupid nuclear war or a comet strike or some unforeseen natural disaster, or most likely we'll kill ourselves with our stupidity but in any case everything that we've accomplished in the past 10,000 years could be erased from all existence and yeah. life could be no more in this entire galaxy as far as we know at least in the neighborhood so 20 years ago I posted to Facebook some my random thoughts and I'm like all these billionaires are just wasting their time and money on their toys, like their mega mansions and yachts. This money could be put to good use. I didn't say, I'm paraphrasing what I said, but what I said was humanity could be wiped out and and these guys are basically just twiddling their thumbs with their yachts and mansions. Doing nothing with and, it. And yeah. the, the the hint hint there, the wink wink nudge nudge, yeah, was do something about it. Some of these guys, one of these billionaires, Tim Allen or uh, Bezos or Gates, <coughs> one of these guys needs to 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 tackle this that problem of of humanity being wiped out. And that was twenty years ago, and in and in twenty thirteen, however many years ago that was, ten years ago. Elon Musk wow. started doing that. Mm -hmm. He started with the electric cars. He started thinking about uh, building rockets. And he... The, the seed had been planted. Uh, it, uh, the message was, was loud and clear. Uh, make, make life multiplanetary. So in case... You got a backup in case something happens to one. You got a little chance. Maybe we'll survive. Okay, let, let me let me let me say something here. I've, I've talked to Tommy about this once once or twice, and one thing I, I question like, so 
what about this? And Tommy just out of the out of the blue, he started talking about the fact that, you know, Elon Musk has used each step along the way to finance the next step of the way. So like whenever he needed to do something, he would use something ancillary to it, like the truck. He would create the truck and use it here on Earth and get people to invest in buying that truck or the car or whatever it is, so that one day he could use that. I mean, the car, the Tesla cars are basically a prototype for driving around somewhere on a planetary surface. But I'm gonna be quiet for a minute. I'm just this trying to say. This is the way to go. I mean, e- Elon. Elon has a big. This guy. We don't. We we talk about him, but I mean, this guy's probably. He probably thinks like the whole Asian perspective more than anybody. He's thinking long term, ten, twenty years in advance. He thinks big, man. He thinks. He thinks big thoughts and. Uh, so have I. I, uh, I think that, I think that he's a genius. He's a visionary. He's like Howard Hughes on crack. Hmm. Uh, he's doing the logical things that should be done on a, Technologically advanced civilization. I mean, we are simple, yet we are complex at the same time. But I think that we try to reach the heavens. We try to jump higher and higher. And he's he's jumping into the the future. I mean, you gotta. Got a barrel at it, but so I've watched him fulfill my uh, s- attempt to fulfill my suggestion twenty years ago. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It was a suggestion only to a broad to the world, basically, I mean, just Facebook. But to see it with your own eyes on a patch of sandy beach Mm. to stand in the shade of a tree you planted 20 years ago was it's indescribable uh, the the feeling of having been a part of it it's not all me well but it's not all you but but there's there's more you've done too though there's more there's more I've suggested a lot of improvements as I saw it circumstances have allowed me to have time to think about some of the issues facing this uh, to to modern arc Um, and what's really kind of amazing to me is that I had to come up with an idea twice because I forgot it the first time and I know that it sounds bullshit but no, I isn't. can't explain it but no. I, I I came up with the idea to catch the starship not how they're doing it, but I suggested catching it before anybody else thought about catching it. And that's just, that's taking a lot of the, it's, it's really advanced the the project, I, I think. Um, but I, that, I came up with the idea to catch it while watching the TV show, but the first time I came up with it, and I didn't remember the first time I thought up with it until after I had thought up with it the second time. It took me seven years. It was seven years between the first time I came up with the idea to catch the starship. It was seven years ago. And I was in uh, St. Jude's in Memphis with my son, and he was having treatment, and I was in the waiting room, and... Uh, there was a magazine there that said 
you'll we could never make uh, large spaceships land because the legs would have to be so big that you're just carrying around legs. Mm. So I started thinking about what to do about that. And in a trance, I was sitting there with nothing to do, but just, I, was, I was literally just thinking about what to do about that. And it just as soon as it occurred to me that move that feature, instead of the legs, move that to the pad, mm. Michael comes out of treatment and he's like, hey, well, wake up. And it was the second I thought about the solution. And the next, the next day, the next hours, I, I, it was gone. It was mm. gone. I I tried and I tried for for years mm. to remember what that I, I remember this sensation of this is it, this is it. The and then of it. it was erased. I can't explain it. It was just it was torture. But there was nothing I could do. I didn't remember the magazine article that said. Uh, the, the, legs. the the legs yeah. issue, and said you'll never be able. To, the bigger the legs, the bigger the spaceship to carry the legs. The bigger the spaceship, the bigger the legs. So it's never ending. But if you move that, move the legs to the pad is the, the solution. Yeah. Well, you know what they're describing. What I'm hearing is is E equals MC squared. I had to come up with it twice. Seven years apart. Do you realize that though? Like it, it, it's really e equals mc squared because you've got to figure out a way to overcome how to, how to, getting your mass at the right size to catch the next level. Well, it's a it's a trick. No, it's not a trick. It's a physics trick. You can't beat physics, but you can tr you can use you can move. Things. You're talking about like a wormhole and like a big picture, like everybody talks about. But what you're, what you're, a, a wormhole is an example. What else? What are you talking about? I'm talking about moving uh, the mass. If you, uh, yeah, if you move, if you that, move the, the the mass of the legs to the pad. Yeah. As long as you can hit the target, you don't need legs. And another thing I suggested to them. Well, that sounds like Einstein also, I mean, because the GPS systems. I mean, if that, if that system is good enough to get it. How, they how do it every it week now? with their Falcon 9. They do it every week. Already. Tell me about, okay, Falcon 9 is different than the space. How is that different? I don't even know. Falcon 9 is a, mm, I guess you call it a medium lift. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Let me guess. This throws out the satellites? that dispenses satellites but the booster comes back and lands either on a, a ship a, a barge at sea or it lands back on the Florida coast but it hits the X on the pad every time it hits the X and if you can do that with a larger vehicle you can catch it right before it lands well just from what I saw on this launch Right. It didn't happen. I mean, they did some well, flips and flops, and they never this. They wasn't gonna attempt to do catch, catch this launch anyway. This was basically throwing away a very large spaceship prototype that was outdated, and you could either park it in the rocket garden with all the other ones, let it take up another thirty foot circle of space. A lot of materials, yeah. You could scrap it. Which, or you could give, I don't know why you don't give them to museums or whatever. I mean, I'm sure the Smithsonian wants Something's one. Something's going to happen to it now. They're going to rescue that thing, surely, from the ocean. Some of them, they chop up. Sell it pieces by piece. And recycle. Okay, so, okay, so he, he's done this now. Are there people with money going to put him, more money with him to go to the next level? Or what's going to happen right now? Is that, I mean, you got the guy that's investing in the... You know, the Chinese guy that I can't remember his name. You talked about him in some other context. I can't remember, but. I can't remember his name. Um, that was another podcast, maybe. I don't know. So, what's going to happen now? What do you think? But now. These but, ships are just going to get bigger. Okay. The sweet thing about okay. catching 
a starship? Yeah. Yeah. Is there's no size limit? But now, could you catch that thing that they threw up this past week? Yes. Now, that, that, that's pretty big, though. That's you can catch huge. it piece by piece. Ah. Two, two different piece catches. But now, could you, like, have, like, a, a triangle out there and pull all three of them down to three different places? The or current no? does... Uh, the current goal is to bring your ships back to where they launched from. Uh, some of these ships are going to land on the moon. They will, of course, need legs. Yeah. But that's a, that's most of them are just going to be payload delivery and come right back. So they don't need legs. You don't want people doing this. They hardly need a heat shield. Yeah, you don't want people in that thing. You want to, you want that thing to be like a UPS truck. Drop off and that the is lead. the entire point: is a rapidly reusable. Oh, and you can even have a people pod. You can have it. Drop it's like people. Futurama. It's exactly like Futurama. I've never seen Futurama. It's a cartoon. I highly recommend it. It's hilarious. Okay, so you went down. So, so we talked about from two thousand. 2003, 2013, which is actually, if you think about it, 2012 was huge. I think the Mayan knew more than they would give them credit for. But anyways, that's another topic for another day. 2013, some things changed for you. You, you saw things differently. And then now, jump, jump forward another 10, 20 years from the initial beginning of this. It's time for a drink, though. But um, I can't... I, mm, mm. So, so tell me, uh, when you went down there, this, this is a big thing. Now, now it sounds, if, if you just listen to it, you think it's just a launch. But, you know, it, this, is, this is geeky enough for geeky fellows like you and I to, like, kind of geek. I wish I could have done it. Oh my God, if I didn't have young kids, I'd be down there, too. But you, you loaded up. You found you a very nice resort to stay in, I think. Yeah. Just, just tell me about your experience being there. Just, just tell me about... You pulled up. You drove twelve hours in your vehicle. Yeah. You pulled up, and uh, then what happened? I uh, I traveled to Brownsville, and I I got within twenty miles of Starbase, which is uh, it's down this little road called Boca Chica. And there's a little village called Boca Chica, and I just found a Motel Six, and I pulled in there and. I got a room for three nights, and then I went to Starbase and took some pictures right before it got dark, and I got there with just, like, you know, 20 minutes to spare. It got dark on me there, but I got some pictures Mm. because the next day was supposed to be maybe a launch. So I'm like, this is my first chance to see the Starbase, see the Starship on the pad before... It may be too late. So, yeah. and then the next day I went to South Padre Island with thousands of other people. It was a beautiful day. And uh, I watched the wet dress rehearsal there on South Padre Island. It was basically a a dry run for the launch for Mm -hmm. everybody. And, of course, it didn't launch. It was scrubbed. And so I went... They carry it just about all the way into it. I mean, do they have you know just out of curiosity, like all those people? They were like doing everything they would do up until that certain point, or we were expecting maybe a launch. Um, there was a the Elon said we're going to launch this Monday, so we okay. we went to see the launch. But anyway, so now go ahead with your story. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to like tap into to like what was actually going on behind you know with the scene there. You know what you think with these people. Go ahead. On the beach there. Watching and waiting for the launch. Uh, well, I plopped down on the beach like a bird, like a fat pelican, and uh, smoked a cigarette. And uh, there were people everywhere. I, I just was enjoying the festive atmosphere. And uh, they had some very large, multi ton stone pink granite blocks there right on the water that was like a water break there 
but they were pyramid sized blocks of granite, beautiful mm-hmm. pink granite, and you could run on them like a like a billy goat. Um, and across the water there, there were some boats in the water, and off in the distance, there's a, this starship on the pad. You could see the tower and the starship there, and you could see it steaming like a dragon. It was. It would turn white when they were filling it up with fuel and uh, it was steaming. You could look at it with your binoculars to get a better view or zoom in. And Of course, they canceled it. So then what are you going to do? I had to wait for days. And if I, most of the time I went back to Starbase and it, you could just drive right up to this thing and park. And I parked... Both times I went, I parked right across the street from Starship. I mean, it, I could see it just sitting there parked. It was right in, right in, right in front of me, and there were people delivering oxygen and nitrogen and helium and methane, and there were tractor trailers coming and going all the time. Some of these guys, they were wearing blue overalls most of the time. Some of these guys are like, "What? What's going on around here? What is? What is this?" They didn't even have a clue that it was a spaceship sitting there on the pad. But you know, not everybody follows these things. Yeah, they were just making a load in there. They were just making a delivery, yeah. and uh, I'd have been tickled pink. But what just gets me is you can just park drive right up to this thing and park imagine driving right up to the saturn 5 and parking where you could hit it with a rock i can't imagine (coughs) those pictures that we're seeing right here hopefully that i mean you're seeing that is like uh that's the very beginning of of something that's hopefully going to be huge one day man you know we don't all get wiped out in some cataclysm this is going to be hopefully beginning of the jetsons age man Finally. I mean, we've been hearing about it forever. You know? Finally. This, guy, this guy's making it happen, though, man. Like he, we're, you know, we're just kind of chilling right now. Y'all yeah, I, I, I don't know. This guy, man. He, what, what is up with this guy? I can't understand. I, I'm jealous What's of going him. on? He's, he's my age. Right he's, on. Uh, just a few months older than me. But right on. This guy has done so much. And like, I, and I want to say yes because of this and the other. Then I think, no, he just didn't. He understands that he has one life to live, and he is... There's something cl- yeah, going something, on with this man. guy. And it's not just him. It's his whole family, his his uh, brothers and, and sisters and mom and whatnot. They're, uh, yeah. they're very nice entrepreneurs and visionaries. And I think his brother is into uh, uh, growing food, you know, food in pods or something like that. They they have a solar city, I think, or something like they own yes. like a big solar farm production. Of course, they have the Boring Company and Starship and Tesla and the small houses. Neuralink. They have their and it was just recently announced he's going to be starting a artificial intelligence. Uh, yeah. Uh, situ- situation. He bought a hundred thousand graphic CPUs, uh, graphic mm. cards. Which apparently graphic cards somehow are good for AI, which is very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it, but then, let's go back to this house situation. If 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 what you listen to in mainstream media is talking about Elon Musk, the way that the reality is, he, uh, I mean, to show his investors that he was serious about what he wanted to do, that he wanted to, you know. At least be on Mars, you know. At least put people there, um, which is a, is a I think was probably a very small part of his goal. But uh, this guy, uh, I mean, he he he. I, I don't even I I don't even understand. I guess that's the thing. It is like I, I don't I, I don't understand such big thinking. You know, with me, I, I think in terms of. Uh, you know, a three or four day, five day, ten blade. Sometimes I think in terms of its quarter. You know, in terms of my, you know, business. I think okay. So this, if I'm really thinking about stuff like I should, I'm thinking. 
Well, this year I'd like to increase revenue by, I'm thinking about that, you know. But now this guy right here, he's thinking about how, what in the, what in the solar system he can change, you know, and, and, and what's out there that he could utilize to get, see, this, the way this guy thinks, I, I can't even comprehend it. You're going to help me out, understand, because I, 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 I am a, uh, you know, I, I was raised up by carpenters <laughs> and brick masons and, uh, paper mill guys and well I, that's fine see you know, when you're building something you you start at the bottom and work your way up foundation yes and that's the same way with the with colonizing the planet or or you know when america uh, when christopher columbus left spain or wherever he came from uh they were going to colonize well they were looking for India but anyway I don't know where I was going with Columbus but we're well, going to colonize Mars expand. like we're, like the yes. colon colonial English people yes. were colonizing the world the Amer Americas in particular you send yes. people and, and set them up and they live there and then that's your stuff you utilize the resources from there well, and send it gonna, back to the home yeah, country. We're going to do that with Mars, hopefully. One day. And there's a lot of reasons to do that. Uh, uh, it's not going to be easy. Um, there's I mean, radiation and temperature craziness on Mars. But uh, I suggested it to the world. I guess whenever I post shit to Facebook, I'm basically just shouting it out to the world. Um, People should pay attention. You probably. need to put up a... A space station between Mars and the Sun that would, one, use solar panels to make electricity, and two, shield Mars from solar radiation. And that's what's blowing off. Mars is wet, but when the Sun melts, it, it just goes to gas, and the solar wind blows it off the planet. If you can keep the solar wind... and from blowing off the atmosphere of Mars, it will collect, and eventually, hopefully, you'll have a an atmosphere, a more hospitable atmosphere on Mars. There's, I recommend basically putting up an umbrella in space. Well, there, there's a way to do it, and if that's not exactly it, I guarantee it's probably a part of it. In fact, I remember reading with with uh, uh, Arthur C. Clarke, and he kind of did some of the same things in his books. I don't know if you ever read Arthur right, C. Clarke. Right, right, yes, absolutely. And and, 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 and and that's what people are going to have to do. And, and people like Elon Musk and people it's who baby think, steps. And who think it's, about this. See, these, ever since, let, let, me, let me just say this. Let me brag about you for a second. Okay. Because now, I've, I've, you know, you're talking about how you uh, you talked about those things. And actually, I've, I've got a lot of screenshots in my... Uh, in my uh, stream that I've taken of Tommy over the years. And Tommy is, that's why I got him here. And uh, number two is not only has he done all this stuff through the years, and we're still looking at stuff that, that he wants to talk about here. This is going to be one of those long-term conversations, I swear to God, because there's so much here that I want to unpack with this guy. But, you know, you know, I have personally watched the things that he's talking about with over the years. I mean, this guy, you know, he has an amazing capacity to think about things. And then, and then, not just talked about things, but took the initiative and his time and his place, his, his, his peculiar, peculiarity in the world, his, his energy, his existence, to go down and watch this. And this is, a huge, this is a huge event because really, I mean, if we don't figure out a way to inhabit other places or figure out how to take the next steps, and it's all and these guys like with Elon Musk. They're, they're thinking about so far into the future. I can't even imagine. Like I mean, you talk to this guy, you hear him talking about the simulation theories. Like, well, you know, it's very, very unlikely that we're in base reality right now. I mean, this guy, this guy's. I mean, he's he's not. He doesn't think like me. Okay, again, a foundation. You can talk about. You build a foundation somewhere, but this guy's man. He's a big thinker. He does big things. I think, I said, I think it's free. It's not 
energetic and uh, sometimes you can start big gears to turning and they keep turning and you may not get credit for these things but humanity benefits from this movement and that's good uh, you don't have to it's not all about me 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 it's about us and he, I try to do the what is best for the most people uh there's too too much selfishness in the world and just uh try to try to be nice and helpful and and don't be a dick it's not not rocket science but um Mm. Well, that's, that's that's some Taoism right there. We're talking about rock, rocket science, and he says it's not rocket science. That's one of those. That's one of those coins. If you're like a Buddhist, you're like going, "Oh shit, Tommy done thrown some deep shit at us now." Because you know that that's the trick. Because you know to do to think like you're thinking about, and to think like Elon's must. This you know that's not just uh, anyway. So. You get down there. I, I, want, I want to go further into it. I've seen some of those pictures, and hopefully we got those pictures turned in front of us right now. Uh, and you'll see, you'll see some beautiful sunsets. You'll see some lighthouses. You'll see all kinds of starship pictures. You mentioned the museum out there of old starships. And uh, all these beautiful, all this stuff out there that has, and you, and you talked about just humping, you know, or jump, jumping from space pod to pod or whatever it was you were talking about you get down there and like you, you already know about all this like with me if I went down there I'd be like oh man cause I'd be smoking weed I'd be like hanging I'd go hide behind some piece of metal somewhere and hide and go oh man but now you actually know about all this bullshit going on in the background it was 420 it was 420 2023 I mean it was uh A day to remember for forever. Uh, oh yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't believe I did it. I can't believe it went. I can't believe it didn't blow up on the pad. I can't believe I went to see it and it was there one day and the next it's blown up over the ocean, the the Gulf. Um, it was a tremendous experience. Uh, it was. It had to have been something like seeing a moon launch. I mean, it was it was the largest rocket ever to humanity has ever launched it, uh, off of the planet. I mean, it is a like the Titanic. I hate to say, but a Titanic spaceship. It's it is a hotel. It's a yacht for for the heavens. It is not a a two or three seater sh little pod it is yeah. a ship it is a vessel it is a proper spaceship with facilities and and it is uh, the future it is you know it is future rama hey but let, let me say this the titanic was you know huge at the time but uh it's it's small now you know you know? right, right so right. so 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 okay so now we've you and I have talked about this personally but you know you you've mentioned what what this thing could lead to and a lot of it it could be you know people it could be car, cargo um, I mean there's a lot that could go on with this I mean there th this thing right here could solve all kinds of uh, you know we talk about having uh, I don't know, supply line challenges this past couple of years. But now if you had some kind of a something or the other that could, uh, you know, could throw a, I don't know how many tons of cargo from China to, uh, from China to wherever. Imagine this. You know. You're, uh, you're in a battle with whomever and you call up 
Elon, for example, and you're like, I need a battle tank right here, right now, in the, anywhere in the world. Mm. And you can have a battle tank sitting there in uh, 90 minutes. That sounds like some stuff from some movie shit, some, uh, you know, FBI, you know, James Bond shit. Or a know. field hospital. You need a field hospital here, there's something going on, we can put you a field hospital here in 90 minutes. Mm. Unfold, the thing drops down. If it can land there, there it is. There's your hospital. That's amazing. And then I joked, we should have a field hospital with a a tank gun on it. Oh, yeah, for sure. And a bar. And a bar. And a bar. And a head shop. A dispensary, yeah. Okay, so so that's that's where it could be, but but now it's... uh, I think I think that's the initial thing, but it, now it doesn't have to be that specific. It can be to an airport. I mean, this thing could. It, <coughs> knowing what what I've seen out of Elon Musk, he, he created these cars. They're mass produced now. They're wanted by everybody. These things are getting better and better. There's ways to hop them up, and you can move across. I mean, this guy's a fucking visionary. I mean, this I I, I you know I. I I hate to sound like a, a fanboy because I'm I never want to be a fanboy. You know the hardest part about all this? What's that? Dreaming up something new and big. Yeah. Because it doesn't you know, we we don't we don't take much to be satisfied, you know, food, yeah. water, shelter, housing, clothing, you know. I wanna go back to housing in a minute. Uh but don't forget to 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 dream big is is difficult. Yeah. Imagine uh, building a city on the bottom of the ocean. You know that's crazy and ridiculous, right? Could be a need for it though. But if it's profitable, I mean, that's maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think of Mars as pre Gold Rush California, where there's. Every mineral on Earth is on Mars, I think. Got to be. And there's nobody there. There's got to be minerals of all kinds just laying on the ground. I mean, I hate to be exploitive of Mars already, well, stripping it of resources. Well, but. I mean, like, you, you have to realize that you have to find it you think you're going to do. But but, now, but if you already wouldn't it be cool to have a nice piece of Martian art made out of Martian gold or platinum or whatever? And if it's for the greater good, there may be diamonds laying around. I mean, it could be more than that. It could be, I mean, like you said, it could be sustainable life there. I, I mean, I, I know there's opal. They said so. <coughs> now. Tell me more about opal. I'm, I'm like, I mean, I, I've heard of it before, but I know it's a, it's a, it's a heirloom. All right, imagine a dried up ocean bed with cracks in it, and those cracks forms opal, okay. which is a pearl like. Oh yeah, because there's all kinds of stuff there. There's shell. There's bone. There's everything. You're there. right. You're right. That must may have something to do with it. The actual. Yeah, mother of pearl type oh, yeah. stuff. There's, there's beautiful. There, there's all kinds of intensity there. Life in 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 under a microscope. And there. there's stuff like that on Mars. So there has been there. oceans on there's Mars. There's been water there. If there's, there's been, been water, water, there's been life. Billions of years ago. Well, if there's been water, there's been life. Billions of years ago. I went up there to my dad's house in the northern part of our state, and I guarantee it was 1,260 feet above sea level. And I went up there, and I have the rocks on this property in that cabinet in my house and everywhere else. And it's sea life from that area from billions of years ago that I have in my fucking hand yeah, man. that just came from right up the road up here. Sure. You know? And, and of course, uh, you know, and that's life back then. And, you know, the thing of it is, is that life, life, life I don't give a shit what, where it's at. It is there to thrive and survive and do things that is inexplicable. Everybody that's ever, everybody that I remember, any name you can remember is something, they've done something inexplicable. I mean, people be talking about Elon Musk and his group, I don't know who in his group, but 
It may be you. If you, it may be us. I don't know. Maybe you. Whatever you're gonna do to make whatever Elon Musk is doing. I'm talking about whoever's listening to this. I mean, there's, there's. Elon is us. Well, he's the culmination of all of us. He's, he's, he's us. He's us. He is. He's the here and now of all of us. He's the culmination. He was just some guy that. He's an earthling. First off, he's like that, it's, that it's all of us. Has. He ties together. Kept putting one foot in front of the other. He tied it all together, man. He's like, this guy right here, he's doing what everybody dreamed. It's like the wildest dreams you could ever imagine. Exactly. He's he's like. The best thing you know, Elon ever did was listen to me. I mean, I, I can't argue with you. 20 years ago, I told him what to do. This dude pays attention to what's going on out there. Maybe he saw it. I don't know how it got to him, but. He pay, he, he's on there, man. He owns a freaking social media club organization. People bust his balls about it, but I mean, that was pretty smart move, you know. I wrote him a letter about that time <clears throat> that he started Tesla. I don't remember if it was a real letter or an uh, email or a, a, I don't think it was a post. That was a long time ago, but I told him I'd work for you for room and board for the rest of my life. Oh, wow. Wow. And I mean it. Yeah. And half. I'm giving him ideas that I just seemed logical to me. And the next thing you know, yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. Let's do a test. Let's, let's. So, the wind's picked up. Indeed. If there's anything that he needs to know right now, other than how to get a hold of you, what kind of, what, you, you've, give, you've already given him two or three things. Yeah. Two out of three is not bad. But I've given him several ideas. So what do you think now? What's the next move for him? So in your mind, not, not, not strategic, even... It could be strategic, or it could be tactile. What do you have for it? Because sometimes tactile can help you fix your, your strategic. Well, there is a word that I have thrown at them for years. It's called piezoelectric, and it's how your uh, it's how your cigarette lighter that with the little button and it makes the sparks. That's a piezoelectric device. And what it is, it's a little crystal that when you squeeze it, it makes a spark. No big deal. Simple. So, I think that the problem from these launches is a ridiculous amount of noise. And I... I'm like, okay, free energy, collect it. And the way you collect it is you take a, 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 a take a subwoofer, a musical subwoofer, like a 10 or 12 or 16 or whatever, conical subwoofer, and you hook that up to a piezoelectric uh, crystal or whatever you call it. And the sound from the launch of those 33, 500,000 pound of thrust each rocket engines can make a tremendous amount of electricity because they're going to activate the speaker, the diaphragm, which activates the piezoelectric, which which makes thousands and thousands of volts each. And you've got thousands of them, so you're sucking the noise out of the air and turning it into electricity. Wow. I mean, you couldn't necessarily use it for your launch, maybe, but you could definitely use it for the community. You you could do like a launch per year. And uh, what was that? Speaker turned off. Okay. But yeah, I I could see that. Why... 
I, okay, so let's so let's just go to to like these houses that Elon is talking about, and this is huge because he actually says he lives in one of these things, a fifty thousand dollar home. I don't know if he lives in that or not. Do you know if he actually does, or have you heard about I that or not? No idea of his living arrangements. Well, supposedly he sold all of his mansions and he's moved into a fifty thousand dollar home. That is maybe his official address. That's know. exactly right. Now, now he may stay there. Some, he says on you know, Twitter all the time, "I slept on my buddy's couch." But you, you got to take that with a grain of salt. I really don't know. Well, I've slept on my buddy's couches too, but we're all we're not like poor. I really don't mm-hmm. care beyond the fact that he took my advice. Yeah, I'm like all these billionaires are wasting their money on these multi-million dollar mansions and yachts you you should be investing in something bigger you know this, like investing this, big what could be more important than extending the lifetime of humanity what could be more important okay where do you where, where do I spend more money do I spend it on myself or my children that's what frightens me about some of these religious people they want to see the end of the world. They want it. Yeah, that, that's which the is religion. terrifying. That's the religion, though. But now, if it was somebody else's religion, they don't they, understand they crazy. that this is the only one that we know of. It's the only reality. I mean, if you end it, this is it. There's, there's nothing really, else. really dumb. It's really in the end of it. But they want to rush it along. Oh yeah, I know that. I Jesus. Mean, but now, you. But now, people. People, if you say that, they'll think, oh, no, Jesus said we got to, though. But no. I, I've never... No. There is some weird stuff with that Eat, revelation. Drink, be merry. But the biggest thing about Jesus was, you know, Matthew. And he did not say about blowing nothing up except for being mucho bueno. Okay, Eat, drink, so, be merry. Eat, drink, and be merry. Launch oh. spaceships. Okay, so let's go, let's go back there. You, you get there and... Uh, you you had to spend a few days. You're on the ground there, and you're watching. The, you know, you you probably do you spend some time near the beach, listening to the bre- the earth the earth breathing back and forth. Or yeah, it is so peaceful there on the beach. There was so few people. I mean, it was almost a private beach. Oh yeah. And uh, there's seagulls and breeze, and you get salt on your glasses, and your windshield of your car is got a little haze on it because yeah. wind blowing off of the Gulf of salty Gulf of Mexico. I feel sorry for the equipment in the spaceship because it's right there and all oh, that stuff. Another reason to make it out of stainless steel. But now, what, what, let's, let, that's a perfect time to talk about this thing here. My little piece of uh, Starship tile. Okay, I was walking to my car a couple days ago and uh, off the beach and... Uh, I walked all the way around. You can walk all the way around the spaceship. You can park on the port side, which is the left side of the ship, and you can walk down the beach and around to the starboard side, which is the right side of the spaceship. But it's quite a hike. Uh, And I was walking back to my car, and this guy was talking about some stuff on his on his tailgate and it turns out that he walks around picking up spaceship debris starship debris and he had he handed me a piece of a starship tile and it's a, just a tiny little one inch two inch piece and it's very light and it probably came off of one of the prototypes that exploded at 16 kilometers you know, on a cloudy day, uh, like, like a year or two ago, so I I'm very thankful for that man. He he sells on e like eBay pieces of Starship, and he has some pretty good pieces. Mm. He had a piece as big as your uh, a saucer of a Starship tile that I was able to look at and hold. And what size are those things? Like, uh, the uh, complete tile is about 16 inches round, shaped like a stop sign, and there's thousands of them. They're maybe an inch and a half thick, <coughs> and they clip onto the ship with three little pegs. 
and uh, this this guy gave me a piece of a starship, which I will cherish forever. I mean, hello. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, amazingly light too, man. That's it's a great souvenir, and it's uh, it's a real deal. So, like, you, you know, you were there on the ground. I saw all kinds of pictures. You sent me pictures all throughout the week where you were, like, in front of the spaceship. Um, you had some, you had those uh, those barrier things they had set up. I think you could only get so close. What was the closest you think you could get to the starship? I'd, it, I'd, it's hard to say. It looked like 200 feet. Uh, so big. It, yeah, it's hard to judge the size of that thing because... Feet it's tall, so huge. Like the, the tower is almost 500 feet tall, and yeah. then right next to it, the ship's a little shorter than that, maybe 400 and something foot tall. Yeah. Because it's sitting on an 80 foot table. The table is 80 foot off the ground. How long is a football field? 300. And this thing is how long? 400? The ship? Yeah. Well, let me look it up real quick. I don't want to lie to you. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah we'll look it up just real quick. This thing, we're just thinking about what kind of... And this thing has... I, I remember hearing it talking about 33... Uh, you said some kind of a specific kind of engine this thing had. What was that thing called? A, a Raptor. A Raptor. Who makes that? SpaceX. They make their own engines. They make their own engines. And they're actually selling some of those to somebody else, aren't they? Who we talk about maybe they were selling it to? Maybe not the. They were selling something to NASA. I forget what it was. 394 foot. 390. That's 9 meter diameter, 30 foot diameter. So it's 30 foot around and. Uh, diameter? All the way? Uh, to around or across? Uh, across? The diameter is the cross section. It's yeah. not around. No, it's I 9 see. meters across. So. It's uh, almost 400 foot. They're going to make it a little bit longer. Jesus, you think about that, though. You got something, for, you got a football field. So, it, like, how wide is the football field? 50 foot? I don't know. I think it is. 100, I think. Or maybe. So, you got something that's, you know, 30 foot across. Just, now, that, 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 that could be huge. This, and this is a prototype. You know, they're they're not there yet. I'm I'm sure they want to figure out a way to have six rockets instead of thirty three or, or it's that... taken them only two years to go from a hop across the yard to a full spaceship test. I'm gonna call this a full spaceship test. It didn't go to space technically, but it launched. <laughs> 